So this time I've gone ahead and created this little scene including just two particle groups, a couple of objects within the object manager and a plenty of nodes on the expressor canvas. So let's take a look at this setup and what it does exactly. First of all I have this PStorm particle emitter which is responsible for generating particles and adding them to the particle group 1 directly. Once the particles are there, they immediately get the shape of sphere as defined by this P-shaped node and sphere object within the object manager. They also start being affected by the gravity, as well as they start colliding with this plane object attached to the deflector node. And I also use this node's event output just to trigger the next node on collision event. And the next node is called P-fragment and it's completely responsible for fragmenting the existing particles into pieces. So after it finishes its job, those pieces become the members of group 2, they have another shape defined by another P-shaped node, they are also colliding with the plane object, and they are affected by the gravity as well. And probably the most important question about this particular setup is, why can't we actually see those fragments yet? Because at this point, we can only see the particles from group 1, and the answer lies behind this little threshold parameter. Once you start decreasing this parameter, you will start getting those fragments as well. But be careful of going too hard on it. Drastic changes here will probably take a lot of machine power from your PC. And keep in mind that this threshold parameter is limited to 1 and 0 values only. The closer this parameter to 1, the harder it would be to fragment those particles. So, and that's the general idea behind this p-fragment node. And if you really like these Expressor tutorials, you can find the whole course devoted to Expressor available on the App Store. Just type in Expressor or follow the link below.